So we're not introducing you, more like checking in this morning with an organization founded on the Cape, based in Randolph, that's now teaching, training, and raising awareness about autism around the globe. Joining us to discuss, Dr. Cynthia Anderson from the May Institute. Great, great to have you back on the show with it's us. Nice Appreciate you coming in. Last time you were here, we, we touched on the importance of things like early diagnosis when it comes to kids and your work with kids. Let's move the conversation forward to what happens when those kids become adults. How does your work change then? How does our work change? That's a great question. So as people move to adulthood, one of the major goals I think of everybody is to find a job and find a meaningful job and to live a life that's fulfilling. And so our work at May Institute shifts in some ways to more of a focus on helping people develop the skills that they'll need to be successful as, ad as adults and to live as independently as possible. What are the skills you focus on? A variety of different skills. So teaching people how to really figure out what their interests are and match those interests to jobs. More of a focus as well on more functional skills to live independently in the community. So anything from just ways to better able communicate to communicate wants and needs to learning how to get along with other people but a focus really on independence when it comes to the workforce what are the prospects like so for people with autism the prospects are not great unfortunately we know that about half of individuals with autism end up either underemployed or unemployed totally it's difficult for people often to find and maintain jobs for a variety of reasons when when it comes to the the spectrum how, how does that a factor in to, to finding the right fit, would you say? So I think one of, the, one of the main problems, well, there's a couple of reasons why people with autism end up having difficulty finding jobs. Some of the reasons have to do with autism itself, so that we know, for example, somebody with autism might have trouble understanding the con contextual cues. You know, when we communicate with each other, mm -hmm. we do a lot more than just talk. And sometimes we even say things, but it's not really what we mean. And you and I might understand that, but for a person with autism, it's hard to understand that. So In terms of, like, sarcasm? And yeah, yeah, understanding sarcasm, or maybe at the end of an interview, somebody says, keep in touch. And I might understand that that means that I shouldn't probably call you. I'll mm -hmm. wait for you to call me. But somebody with autism might think, okay, I'm going to call, and I'm going to call every day or every couple of days because you told me to keep in touch. So those kind of things can cause difficulties on the job. But we also know that the biggest barrier for employment is just a lack of knowledge and understanding on the part of employers. And so that's what you're doing a lot of work on that front, raising awareness. And across the globe, your next stop is India? That's correct. Gotcha. So I mean, kind of just real quick, we only have about 30 seconds left, but I mean, kind of touch on just what your mission is on that front, just on the global stage. I think our mission globally, just like our mission in this country, is to spread awareness, help people better understand the complexities of autism, and that people with autism, they want the same things that you and I do. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate you spreading that message here this morning with us. What's the other website to turn to? From National, our? so you can go to the National Institute dot org, National, uh, National Autism Center dash dot org, goodness gracious, or May Institute dot org. Gotcha. So you got some options. And of course, you can go to cbsboston.com. We hope you do share this with your friends. Appreciate you. And thank you so much for coming in this thank morning. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.